Listen up, people. We have a big favor to ask, and we promise it won't take up too much of your time. You know, our show is supported by some fantastic sponsors, right? Well, we'd love to hear your feedback. Head to ESPNPodcastStudy.com and fill out a short, anonymous survey. That's it. We swear again. That's ESPNPodcastStudy.com. So I get a text last night from David Sampson, and it's just the all-star voting. It's the 15 top vote getters and Lewis Brinson wasn't on any of the voting sheets and he just said roar he said we were more roar than reach and our Lewis Brinson campaign I mean what happened you fled things up that's what I'm telling you right now something's up and this is giving me new life in this campaign because I was ready to kind of just be like you know what let's let this take its course but I think there's something going on here because I know look it's simple math, Dan. You have almost 400,000 followers on Twitter, right? We put this on Twitter. Let's say a quarter of them, right, voted a for Lewis quarter? Brinson. Yeah, 25%. That's not how Twitter works. You're Let's say 25 25% per- uh, 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 of the things on Twitter are bots. Let's say 25% of those people voted for him, right? Five times a day. By my count, he should have around 6 million votes. There's no way he's not in the top 15. Unless something is up. And I think something is up. And there's two people to blame for this, Dan, if you're wondering who those two people are. One is you for not really getting behind this. And two is you for the relationship that you created with Major League Baseball (laughs) that they would look into this and try to hold this down. And I think the media got to this a little too soon. We needed to kind of sneak this by for one vote so we'd have them up in like the 7-8 range. And then he's not just going to fall off and disappear, and then we could keep the party going. But they got onto it too quick. That's the thing. Is it over? No, it's not over. It's just begun. <laughs> this has just begun, Dan. It'd be easier for Dan to get behind it if you were truly behind it. Oh, I'm behind it. Okay, well, now you are. Wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. But hold oh, on. I, I'm behind hold it. Hold on. I'm with you. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, mister, he's behind it. Because <laughs> we had a little pep talk situation on Friday. Where I came out of the studio and I see Allison tending like a one would tend to a wounded soldier, tending ah. to Guillermo, who is sitting in a seat, <laughs> having reconsiderations of every kind. I don't like what I've done to Lewis Brinson. Do oh. you think he's mad at me? And I'm and I'm borderline screaming at him, like like he's a professional baseball player. You're right. I mean, when you do one of these campaigns, you got to stop thinking about the guy you're campaigning for. Have I ever come to you and said, hey, Dan, I feel bad about what I'm doing to J.J. Watt? Have I ever said that to you? you say it afterward. You say it. But you're soulless also. That's right. Nobody, you don't, he's not the ally you want. Allison is partly to blame for getting in Billy's head. The ally. Definitely. And I have Brinson at 16 right now. I got a good feeling he's at 16. I'm telling you. Something is amiss. Something is afoot. Something is somewhere and something. I'm telling you right now. And he's getting hot, ladies. Did you see what he did yesterday? Oh, he missed did another you just home say run. Something by... is amiss. Something, something. I'm telling you. Something is amiss. Something is afoot. Something's a something. Yeah, Rob Manfred is uh, trying to squash and quash this whole campaign. But I will say this: since this campaign began, Brinson's batting average has skyrocketed from 157 to 169. Nice. Boom. Nice. Excellent. That's no small feat. In a week, it's jumped up 12 points. That's impressive. He missed another, he missed another Springer Dinger yesterday by four and a half inches. Did you see that ball? A shot to center field that hit the yellow line between like the weird, like, curve of the home run sculpture in the corner. He's getting hot, man. He's going to be an all-star. He has a lot of at-bats, too. Moving your average up 12 points at this point in the season, not that easy. Yeoman. What happened to your scouting report? Have uh, people has he adjusted to the adjustment? Well, it's been working. I mean, hmm. you want to get a quarter of the Twitter followers to vote for him at least once. When in this studio, Chris Cody hasn't voted That's for him. That's the once. thing. That's another Roy Bellamy thing. Bellamy certainly hasn't been That's voting for Lewis thing. Brinson. Well, hold on. I got a quibble with Roy. I've done my part. Uh, I got a quibble with Roy. And w- at nine fifteen, we're doing another rousing round of Royals. Ra- Roy's realm. Nope, 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 wow. nope, nope, nope. We're we are not doing, not doing Roy's, Roy's realm. realm. You wow. you what? You, you do not choose when Roy's realm happens. Wait, who told you the that? king only chooses. The king. And um, my king does not want to do it today. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, your king didn't want to do it yesterday. Your king That's never true. wants That's to do it. Your true. king never wants to do any of this. Quiet when you're besmirching and, the great king. Well, the, here's the thing about the king. 
The king had his own segment yesterday, everything dressed up around him so that he could be kingly. And the king chose to make the royal proclamation of, I'm tired. <laughs> That's how the king decided to use the platform bequeathed him. At I'm nine- tired is how he is how he came in. Good morrow at 915. Every day we shall decree his majesty's royal proclamation of I am tired. <laughs> Greg Cody of the Miami Herald is in with us. Hi, everybody. And what I walked into today was he and Stugat arguing about who's A-list and who's not A-list. And Greg Cody said at one point, grades change, my grades change. And so, as inevitably, tomorrow's guest, John Hamm, Stugatz is saying, not A-list. And then eventually, because he's Stugatz, we got to De Niro, not A-list. He's not. He used to be. Yeah, made a lot of bad movies. Yeah. I mean, there was a time where I would sprint to every De Niro movie, and that time has come and gone. It has. I mean, well, he's not an A-lister well, hold anymore. Hold on a second. The, 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 Guillermo, put this on the poll, please. Does De Niro get to be an A-lister for life? Because Cody was sitting here saying that Jack Nicholson's not an A-lister either. Well, I've gotten into a big argument with my wife about this. Um, she says that, that uh, an actor cannot become, quote-unquote, a has-been simply by aging. Uh, she would... Th- would say that Jack Nicholson is still a superstar. I would say that if you were all but retired and really not making current popular movies anymore, you you can't be a superstar. Is Bill Murray an A-lister? He was. No, he, he still was. is. All these people still are B-plus. A-listers, man. No, the Murray I, uh, is a B plus. You guys are the only ones who think this. The only ones. Oh, I don't think so. I think the grades change. I really we do. Can say, we can... Once an A-lister, always an A-lister. I mean, that's Dude, crazy. We're still sitting here talking about Michael Jordan every day. Well, he's an A-lister. I mean. But I'm saying he hasn't made any work in a while. It's better than LeBron. I mean, A-lister. That's it. I mean, he's the greatest basketball player ever. A-lister. I'm not certain. Jack Nicholson, De Niro, they're in the realm of best actors ever. Stugatz. Yeah, but... You forget the arguments we're having. You forget them. Yeah, You just got caught up in De Niro, in in Jordan. No, here's the deal. If Jordan decided to suit up and play in an NBA game, I would get to that arena wherever that arena is so quickly. I would not do the same if De Niro, you know, puts out another movie or Jack... I wouldn't do it. I'd go see Jordan any time at any age. I would not do the same for Jack Nicholson and Robert De Niro. Sorry. Jordan has shoes come out every year, too. De Niro and, you know, Nicholson don't have these things every year. By the way, I think Michael Jordan might be a better shoe salesman than basketball player. Do lists include the dead? Uh, be, because if, if they do, then Lawrence Olivier continues to be an A-list actor. How no, does that work? A-list does not. Living only? A-list does not include the dead. Okay, so Buster Keaton so uh, is no longer change. be on a list. Oh, Charlie Chaplin is no longer an A-lister. Yeah, I think he is because he's, he's such an icon. Mr. Silent Films. Make up your mind, man. Does it change or not? You're all over the place. Changes James with Cagney de- would with, be another one. Changes with death, not with death of career. Cagney time. So, Bill Murray. John Hamm, you know, joke. you know how Stugatz, you know how Stugatz works though, because the Stugatz prism is the only prism that matters. Yeah. Stugatz doesn't, he didn't watch Mad Men and therefore he's disqualified the idea that John Hamm could be an A-lister. Just he says, absolutely not. I haven't heard of it. If it hasn't run through my prism, it's not something. It's, this is not a testament to my ignorance. It's always going to be not an A-lister. Mm-hmm. What That's else right. did he do? I mean, go ahead. Reel him off, Dana. <laughs> Waiting. What did I just see him? I just saw him in a video of some sort. Who? <laughs> oh, you can't remember it. What did I just see him in? What oh did no, you just see no. Him I saw him? no. Yeah, I saw him in um that uh, that that show. Instagram Black, stories. No, no. Huh. no. <laughs> uh, Black Mirror. Yeah, that was a great. He episode. was in a good episode of Black Mirror. Yeah, yeah, iconic White Christmas. How come John Hamm has never co-starred with Kevin Bacon? That'd be a good combo, wouldn't it? Was that a yoke? <laughs> hey, oh. Hey, hey. 
<laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. What That's got to hurt, man. What happened? I thought it was hurts. deserving. I really oh. did. Why? Why? <laughs> tough, tough crowd over there. What? My kid even look at me. I know it was breakfast and all that, but you can't crossbreed. We were s- s- strictly on swine. That yoke was runny. We were doing breakfast. He did ham and bacon. No. We got the yolk. Oh! Not all of us did. What else you got? What else you got? If you're not going to go, if you're just doing swine, what do you got that... Who's an actor whose last name is Pigs in a Blanket? Like what? (laughs) Ash Browns. John Wiener counts, right? Yeah. What do you guys want me to do with this? With what? What? I mean, he handed you gold, Cody. With what? John Hamm? The video that you saw him in? I'm not really sure. Did you like it? (laughs) Yesterday we were talking about Ocean's 8 and we got into the debate. Who's the bigger star these days? Sandra Bullock or Rihanna? Oh, Rihanna, right? That's what I'm saying, too. I think worldwide Rihanna's a bigger star than Sandra Bullock. Because uh, I was looking at I was looking at an Instagram post, and it was all the stars of Ocean's 8. And I was thinking, because Rihanna had kind of like, she was like fifth or sixth most important in that movie. And then I'm like, she's by far the biggest star in this picture. Well, it feels like music and movies have changed enough. Movies coming to the middle and music rising that the pop star has reached the status of the movie star. That if you're the, if you're Taylor Swift, because the way movies have changed, because now movies and television are the same and there's not really what, you know, there's, there, the rock is the biggest. <laughs> right. I, I think that might have started with, not started with, but been defined by Jamie Foxx, who, one day he's an R and B singer. The next day he's an actor singing in a movie. You know the the lines are blurred. It, it's it's not just movies and song. It's entertainment. But it's also the popularity of the Kardashians and pop culture and the way things have moved. Once upon a time, before access to everything, movies was the way that everyone got to know people. Now you have access to everybody right away, and so it's uh, it's more cult of personality stuff than the vessel to deliver it in acting. Piggy Smalls. So put it on the poll, Guillermo. Uh, Rihanna, you want to go? What do you want to go there? Q rating or who's the bigger star, pop star or movie star? Well, who's who's more successful? Also, because Sandra Bullock has an Oscar, right? But but I think Rihanna is more accomplished as a musician, even though she. I mean, does she have Grammys? What's what like? What are we basing accomplishment on? Because success wise, if you win an Oscar, that should be the but greatest the, accomplishment. No, no, but this is what I'm saying, though. All of that stuff feels like it's being devalued by fame. That that the winning of an Oscar doesn't mean as much as being famous, and you're more likely to be famous as a pop star than you are as anything else. Chris Porkinson. According to the internet, Rihanna's net worth is 245 million, and Sandra Bullock's is 200. So we're doing it by what? net worth now? What? We're doing it by net worth. I'm just throwing that information out there. I feel like Bullock was on the has-been train until recently. This is a resuscitative uh, uh, role for her, in my mind. Marvin Ham. Who's not on a resuscitated has-been train for you? It sounds like you don't think that, there, that there's anybody that deserves... Yeah, there are A-list. There are current happening people. Who's a movie list A star right now? Who's a movie A lister right now? I don't go to movies, so it's tough for me to judge. Hammy Sosa. You can't sit here and look me in the face. You can't look me in the face and say that you don't know any A list movie stars right now. None. Zero. Um, because you're not you're disqualified. You're disqualified from being able to comment on whether Jack Nicholson is an A-list right. superstar. Yeah, I've heard of. If you're if you haven't seen a movie in the theater since Swing Vote. Is John Depp still happening? I'm asking you. I don't know everything when you enter Australia. <laughs> He used to be an A-list. <laughs> That's him right there. His dog was abducted, or he uh, he smuggled a dog from Australia. He got caught by this guy named Barnaby, um, and Barnaby threatened to kill his dogs within fifty days, and almost sentenced him to ten years in jail. So Johnny Depp made this uh, video. Declare everything when you enter Australia. Tyler Pigpen. Oh God. 
Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. I could spend the rest of my life and several other lives over the next 190 years searching, scouring all over the earth with an army of helpers for a single reason for you to listen to the Don Strzok Show coming up, and I would not return with a single one. The Don Strzok Show up at 7 o'clock from 7 to 8. Stugatz. I'm just saying, I, for the next, I could spend the rest, I could spend, if you gave me, several, if you gave me several lives, if you said, it opened up a genie bottle and said, uh-huh. here are hundreds and hundreds of years, all you have to do is come back with a single reason to listen to the Don Strzok show, I said, I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to have to kill me right now. Way to promote, buddy. This is the Don Levatar show with the Stugats on the ticket. You can join us for Dan's Father's Day Fiesta Thursday at Fogo de Chao in Miami Beach. You'll get to meet Dan, Billy, new fathers Roy and Chris, along with other ticket personalities. Just register at the theticketmiami.com for a chance for you and a guest to enjoy lunch at a fully loaded swag bag. You have until before 11.59 tonight to register. This is it, last day. It's the Dan Lebitard Father's Day Fiesta at Fogo de Chao from your friends at 790 The Ticket. Greg Cody also going to be there, and as Sugats mentioned, the deadline is today, so make sure you go ahead and register. 11.59 tonight, up to then. Midnight strikes, time has run out for you to register. It's a really cool event. There's going to be a Miami Heat swag bag out there, top golf certificates, amazing food, a Q&A session with Roy, Chris, yeah. Billy, Greg Cody. Dan's going to be stopping by. By the way, I've also had a couple people reach out to me and ask if I could rig the thing so they can be there. Like, we're not in control of that. No, I think that's like Beast. Go bother Beast or yeah. someone at the, uh, you know, oh. the station. Not us. The radio personality of the year? Yeah. That Beast? Radio personality Congrats. Beast. You know what? what? Congrats, Beast Brian London. Because that dude works hard yeah. and has been working hard for a really long time. So I don't want to hear how fraudulent the voting is and how the same people can't win every year and how our show just collects all the uh, awards. We know we deserve it, but, it, you know, they got to let Brian London yeah. win occasionally. The, the Brian Londons of the world, they got to get their shine, too. So it's all political. I mean. yeah, it really is. <laughs> so I, I wanted to address the elephant in the room Ooh. that Dan, wow. look, our show is, <laughs> our show is guilty. Of uh, running things into the ground, what? right? Us. That's the, yeah, Ooh. us. <laughs> and we hit on something yesterday oh, we that we were a little worried about. We didn't have that much confidence going into it, but it was a massive smash. The likes of which our fan base has never seen because I've never quite seen the reaction to a segment that we've done quite like I've seen with Roy's realm. Yeah. Wow. It was a smash success. Yeah. People want more. They want it today. They want it every segment. No. Let me tell you something, people. No. We're not going to do that with this. No. This one's special. We're not going to do this every day. You're going to get tired of it. Listen, our accents, it can be grating. It can't all be fireworks, people. Sometimes you got to talk sports. When you go to a concert and the musician pulls out an acoustic guitar, you're not really cursing the musician. You know you got to slow it down to build it back up. Yeah, yeah. And occasionally our show is going to throw a straight sports segment. Occasionally we're going to do what we did in the first segment. And then you're going to have Seven Nation Army play, yes. which is Roy's Realm. Yeah. You can't do Seven Nation Army every song. Right. You've been in sports arenas. You get tired of it. Yeah. We wanted to do something different today. Yeah. So we were talking... In, in our group chat, which we talk all the time about uh, show ideas, and we wanted, hey, let's, uh, let's throw out some ideas. It's uh, Dan saying how slow it is in sports. It's a slower time. Let's prove him wrong. And Billy fired in right off the bat with, I want to talk about aluminum foil. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes and no. This is what happened. So over the weekend, I was cooking, and I was thinking to myself, you know what? I should probably have a side business going. That way, when this all crashes and burns, because one of us says something stupid, I'll have something to fall back on. And I was thinking, what is the best product? What's the best company that I can have? And I'm looking at different products, and I realize aluminum foil is a perfect product. 
because it's going to sell. People need aluminum foil, and there's not that much innovation in aluminum foil. You look at paper towels. They change the length of paper towels. They change the patterns, the thickness, the marketing. There's all kinds of packaging things that change. Aluminum foil Reynolds wrap, it's the same box. It's always been the same box. I think the only thing that changes is maybe they sell like pre-cut ones, but it's perfect. They just have the machines. They cut it up. They roll it up. They put it in a box, send it out. People are going to buy it. How much goes into aluminum foil? It seems if you could get in the aluminum foil game, it seems to me like the perfect business to have. So you texted this yesterday, and for 20 minutes, I went on a mission to try and discredit your theory. Yeah, no. And guess what? Good luck. You are absolutely right about absolutely. aluminum foil. Yeah. I was trying to cheat. I was bringing utensils into the mix because, look, the classic spoon, that's a timeless thing. No one's yeah. going to take away the spoon. No uh-huh. one's going to take away the fork and knife. But utensils are different. Look, scissors, amazing invention. Scissors are never going to change our entire life. We may use lasers, though, and that'd be an upgrade. Yeah. But until the lasers come, scissors win. But this is a different class, and there is no top in the aluminum foil. You are absolutely right on this. Well, here's the thing, too. I was trying to think, well, what is it that you can have that will bring you back the most money, right? So would I rather have aluminum foil that costs whatever it costs to produce? Like, let's say 15 cents a roll to produce, right? And then I sell it for, like, 2 bucks. Would I rather have that and make back a little bit, or would I rather have a product that costs a little bit more, but I sell less of for a lot more? I'd rather sell bulk, baby. Just boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Put out that aluminum foil. You know that Twitter account, How Stuff's Made, yeah, and you yeah. can see how things are manufactured? Yeah. I would love to see how aluminum foil is made. Do the, is there just a massive cube of aluminum I don't know. that they take sheets? How do you make aluminum foil? It's weird. It's space age. And literally, it is space age. You watch Apollo 13. They don't have this like cement on their spacecrafts. Everything's held together by aluminum foil. Mm-hmm. How is that even possible? I don't know. One upgrade we could make to aluminum foil to change the industry is aluminum foil that works in a microwave. If we could figure that out, that science experiment, because, right? Am I, am I right? Yeah, aluminum you foil is, you can't put it in the microwave. Microwaveable aluminum foil. Aluminum foil and say, hang on, I'm going to put that in my no. idea notes. Just, by the way, folder. guys, don't put aluminum foil in the microwave. Yes. Don't listen no, to no, this no, suggestion. No. Don't try no. to invent no, some. No, no, you're going to blow up your thing. You're going to start yeah. a fire. The Dan Levitard show yeah. strongly discourages mm-hmm. you putting aluminum foil in microwaves. Do not try that at home. Another thought I had listening to you guys talk with scissors. Aren't scissors, like, if... They're only right-handed, right? You have to buy left-handed scissors. There's left-handed scissors. We need yeah. to make scissors that are ambidextrous. You know, being a lefty in this in this world is hard. Yeah, it's hard. Your yeah. chances of survival are actually lower if you're a lefty because the world is made for right-handed people. That is a that is a fact, Jack. Wait, what? Yes, no. You're more likely. hundred percent of people die right-handed. No, no, or left-handed. no, 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 no. But I'm saying die young. You know what I mean? Die by an accident. Let's look it up. Right. Yeah. What kind of act? Like left-handed no, it's, people it's, it's are more inclined to get hit by jack. cars. It's a fact. You're more likely to get in some sort of accident that'll tragically end your life early if you're left-handed because the world was designed for and by right-handed people. Which way does the Earth spin, left or right? Well, the Earth doesn't really spin because we know it's flat. Oh, mm. that's true. So, do you guys have any other products? Because I'm, I was looking like hand soap. They change the stuff. Sometimes it's orange. Some of it's yellow. That's like a whole orange and yellow and blue and purple and all that stuff. Those are all just different tubes that you need to you make. There's only one aluminum machine. I'm assuming. I got an idea for aluminum foil. You know what's hot right now? Snapchat filters. No. Oh. So it's aluminum foil, right? Kind of reflective. What if you bake? a Snapchat filter into the aluminum foil. And as you're tearing it out, look no, at this. No. I'm a unicorn. See, this is exactly why I don't... This is why I like aluminum foil, because it doesn't need all these gimmicks. It's what it is. And you know what it is, and it's trusty. You go to it, you use it to cook, that's it. I don't need a Snapchat filter for aluminum foil. I just put it on my stuff, put my food on top of it, spray a little spray. But that's another thing. Like Pam or whatever, that spray that you use to put it so things don't stick to the aluminum foil. All kinds of different flavors and scents and stuff complicated i thought oh this is an easy product no no someone has to come up with let's have olive oil let's have butter let's have whatever peanut oil whatever it is everybody changes these things up you don't need to be creative in the aluminum foil game you know what else is great pool string trash bags oh yeah oh yes. boy you put that in a trash can you don't have to worry about that thing sinking into the trash can because you have too much weight on it was there a world in which the pull string trash bag didn't exist yeah and oh, they yes. still by the way sell them without them what yeah. yes, yes, you're yes, savage yes, you're yes, savage if you use one of those who would choose that a dumb yeah. dumb my wife bought that and it kept sinking into the trash bag couldn't even tie it like it was just it was bad so Roy generally lives in a pit of misery, 
<laughs> and uh, when you were talking about great inventions, his mind already veered off into terrible inventions, yeah. and he responded with what is probably the most useless invention of all time. What's the that? traditional white paper plate that can't hold any sort of food oh, with right. marination on it. Yeah, it yeah. just folds in, essentially making a plate taco. That is the most useless thing. Yes, Go to absolutely. Publix, get something with a little wax on it, and use that. Who buys these paper plates? How is that industry? It's basically a cult, uh, coffee filter. You have to use, like, three of them stacked up to get any sort of, like, s- some strength behind it. I'm, yeah, you're wasting your money. I'm telling you. It's it's a straight-up coffee filter. You'd have more luck with a coffee filter because at least that comes in the shape of a bowl. But it's a good product <laughs> to own now that I'm thinking. If I'm the one selling those plates, I have 100 plates, but you need to use three of them. So you really only have, like, 33 plates. So you're selling plates three times as fast as people think they need to buy them. I think this plate thing might be good, too. Oh. My wife and I always get into big arguments over this. When you guys are at home, let's say you want to pour yourself a nice glass of juice. Do you guys use, like, a glass cup from your cabinet or a yeah. solo cup? Because yeah. we have solo cups and we have our cups. And what do you, I'm not going to – I don't want to, like, yeah, affect well, the jury. Well, I don't use a glass cup. Sometimes I use, you know, the plastic cups. Right. You know, the ones that you can get at sporting events and whatnot oh, for yeah, the I juice. Those two. Those are uh, however, with juice, I'm very particular. If I want a glass of juice and I don't go to juice often, it needs to be in a glass because it's very satisfying and a tiny glass. I just love a solo cup. I know my wife tells me it's not great for the environment, oh, but I'm buying these solo cups. I'm paying this company. I am using these. So- I just prefer a solo cup to any other glass. I think you should use a solo cup if you're going to have more than two drinks, because if you're just going to have a little bit of juice, you're going to throw it away right after, then you wasted the cup. I'll rinse it out, though. I'll reuse it mm-hmm. on the same day. If it's overnight, it's in the garbage. Yeah, but if it's same day, I'll rinse it out and put like water in it or something. Chris, you're a big table game guy. You ever play flip cup and then the next morning wake up with what you're pretty sure is a, a deadly disease? Oh, those cups are so gross Cess the next day. of bacteria. Yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> Billy. Billy would never play flip cup. Oh, yeah. Well, beer pong's a lot worse than flip cup. No. Because the ball's bouncing on the floor and stuff. You and know you, you, gotta, you gotta get the pool water. No, nah, yeah, but then, exactly, you're putting it in dirty water. And then people think that they're really like, oh, it's good, I'm throwing it in this water that's been yeah. used by a hundred different people. And a bunch people. of people's hands have been in it. Yeah. I'd rather play flip cup than... I've been at hotels before and where, like, we play flip cup and the next morning or the next day, we're like, alright, let's play flip cup again. Ooh, the same cups. Those are gross. Sorry, we gotta use them. Alright, so you know what I'm thinking? After doing this segment and the talking cups. it out and talking about cups and, uh, and aluminum foil um, and those useless paper plates that make me mad, right. <laughs> Roy's Realm returns tomorrow. Oh! I'm a shower curtain, and I do one thing, keep water from leaking everywhere. So you see why I feel useless compared to Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could Geico save you money, but they've been around for over 75 years, and they give you 24-7 access online, over the phone, or on the Geico app. And they've got a 97% customer satisfaction rating. They do all this while I have to listen to this chucklehead. Oh, good, he stopped. Oh, great, an encore. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Don Lebatard. Stugatz doing, you know, hard, hard preparation for the show has just been blurting to everyone who will listen. Do you guys realize that we're not making Franks anymore? And do you realize there are a shortage of famous Franks in the country? Yeah. Stugatz. I obviously brought it up with the guys, and we were having a very interesting conversation. It wasn't interesting. Well, we thought it was. The obvious is Frank Sinatra. He's the most famous Frank of them all. Mm -hmm. After that, good luck. Good luck. So I'm telling you... Kids, if you're named Frank out there, there's a good chance you're not going to amount to anything. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on the ticket. Guillermo, put it on the poll, is you're not going to amount to anything. <laughs> Something said by an 80-year-old. <laughs> you're not going to amount to anything. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald in with us. What do you need people to click on, Cody? Well, I have a column uh, that I wrote yesterday that's uh, online. And in today's uh, inky pulp edition, it's on uh, my continuing um, campaign to get Howard Schnellenberger in the College Football Hall of Fame. And and you can go to MiamiHerald.com or just Google my name and Howard Schnellenberger and uh, you can click on it and uh, help a help a guy out. Do me a solid. And do Howard a solid. A yeah. South Florida icon. Did you talk to him? I uh, did. For your column? You gave you. You made a call and I did. you did some reporting? <laughs> I did. I, I And I also talked to Steve Hatchell, the former Orange Bowl uh, committee executive who now runs the National Football Foundation and is the main guy keeping Howard out of the uh, Hall of Fame by 
by his uh, company's uh, intractable rule requiring a minimum 600 career winning percentage, which is totally arbitrary. Um, the, the College Football Hall of Fame includes 32 coaches below that standard because the, the rule of admission changed uh, not to penalize Howard, but uh, with that effect. And so um, it, it's it's a cause of mine because, uh, you know, Howard is, is on the coaching Mount Rushmore of not one, not two, but three college football programs at Miami, of course, at Louisville and, and at FAU. And uh, he's had an extraordinary career. He's a national champion and uh, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. OK, this is interesting because I'm not sure a lot of people based on his Louisville and FAU resume, even though he was a program builder. I don't feel like a lot of people put him on a Mount Rushmore for the work done at Louisville and FAU. You're going to come up with, for football, you're saying, right? Yeah. You're going to come up with four more? I mean, for FAU and Louisville? FAU, he's in luck because FAU can only fill out a Mount Rushmore. I think they've only had four coaches. Well, at at Louisville, um, they had done nothing uh, as a football program. I think they'd had six or seven losing seasons in a row. Howard came in. Uh, made them nationally ranked for the first time and left the school with a beautiful campus stadium. Uh, FAU, he founded from scratch. Uh, he literally is the father of that program, which has now taken off to, to the degree that they can get Elaine Kiffin as coach. And, and last year they won their first bowl game since Schnellenberger coached ending in 2011. So yeah, he, he's on the Mount Rushmore of three programs. Mike, uh, can you please get for me? I mean, the Louisville Mount Rushmore. Who, who... Well, Petrino's on there twice. Uh, I mean, honestly, yep. that, that that phrase, you're going to keep using it. It doesn't mean anything. Right. It means something. It doesn't it's mean Coach anything. Yeah, it so. does. yeah. uh, Schnellenberger and Petrino twice. Can yep. you, uh, can you, <laughs> Petrino one time with a normal face, the next time in a neck brace, <laughs> all scratched up? No, that's the Arkansas Mount Rushmore. Yes. Can you please call? Fake Howard Schnellenberger and see if he has stopped being a diva. Oh, he's a diva. I would Very like very busy. Man. I would like Cody to interview the fake Howard Schnellenberger. We haven't heard from him in about ten <laughs> years, and so Cody's written a column, and uh, I want to play some fake Howard and I want to play some real Howard. All right, I have a question and a proposal for Greg. First, like aside from reading your article, how can people actually help him get into the Hall of Fame? Um, it's, it's difficult. They really can't, uh, you, you know, it, it's, it can be <laughs> so a social a crusade of yours. That... It, it's a quixotic, uh, crusade by me, uh, because unless they change this rule, it's never going to happen for Howard. But, uh, my, my point is well, not, what do you need people to do? What do you need? How do Read you... his column? No, but that's, that helps Cody. How what else that, are you doing? How does that help Howard? Right. What do you need people to do? I you need, need people him to write this guy, this former Orange Bowl head uh, letters. I, I wish I could give you Steve Hatchell's uh, email address. I don't have it. Go I ahead, let's get it. I Allison, don't believe he has one. Allison, let's get Steve Hatchell's email address. All uh, right, now on to my proposal, and I need to consult with Stugatz because I haven't done this yet. But I feel like the Lewis Brinson to the All Star Game campaign team would like to you know, pair up with you, mm. and maybe we can help each other. Yes, we appreciate that. So we, we're we going to need you to write a couple articles to get Lewis Brinson into the All-Star game. A couple. Uh-huh. Yeah, a couple. and then we're also going to, you know, help get Howard Schnellenberger into the Hall of Fame that we can't actually get him into. Oh, oh. you can actually help. I have helped. I've written a column about it. No, not Schnellenberger. Our Brinson campaign. Right. Brinson, yeah. yeah. Um, if we help your Schnellenberger campaign... By having our listeners email Steve Hatcher, yeah. will you help our Brinson campaign by putting a Miami Herald article about how important it is that Lewis Brinson get into the All-Star It game? could be a symbiotic relationship, I will say that. Look, my, ju- just, my, by the way, my hashtag for my uh, Schnellenberger campaign is He doesn't care about the symbiotic portions of this hashtag relationship. Hashtag pipe he, up. He, he, We're he, on to Brinson. He only cares about his his portion of this. That's why you got we can work on that. Like, we can. That's a possibility is because he doesn't want to help anybody other than himself. That would be a tough sell with my editors. Uh, Not even Howard. He doesn't even want to help Howard. While some people would look at yesterday as a big L for us because Lewis wasn't allegedly in the top 15, I saw it as a positive thing because the Marlins sent out an email saying to vote all their players in with hashtags. On that list, Lewis Brinson. So it yeah. seems like they're embracing our campaign as well. Hashtag? Yeah, hashtag sweet Lou. Yeah, man. So it Impressive. seems like they're in on this also. If Greg's Schnellenberger article were to break some clicks record, maybe that would help his case for getting into the Hall Hey, that's not a bad idea. You know, I hadn't thought of that, but uh, that's a really good idea by you, Christopher. Thank Uh, you. Mike, see what fake Howard you have back there, real Howard. See what holds up, what doesn't hold up. But first, uh, I want to talk about this John Shea. Billy, do you know who this John Shea is? The stadium guy? I don't know who he is. (laughs) 
John Shea, his Twitter handle is John Shea Hay. The Shea Hay kid. <laughs> That's the joke I think he's making. Way to go, redundant guy. <laughs> so, this is what he writes. Apparently, he is near the Marlins or he covers the Marlins. He writes, gotta love the Marlins. They intentionally walk Longori to fill the bases and face the game's hottest hitter, Crawford. Then Chen balks. Then Chen intentionally walks Crawford. Then Chen gets the hook. I don't believe I'm tweeting this. That is the state, the sorry state of people who are around the Marlins. That's the baseball you're watching. That's what you're sending out into the ether for people to consume. And that's very one-sided. Yesterday was a nice win for them. They beat nice Madison win. Bumgarner. Three comebacks. Yeah, man. People were clicking. Ramuto hit a home run. The other guy, what's his name? The left fielder that used to be a third baseman hit a home run. Brian Anderson hit a home run. Yep. Brent Diesel hit a ball that should have been a home run. Brian Anderson could get some Rookie of the Year votes, and so could Caleb Smith. Yeah, man. He could. And what is Shea doing, doing criticizing the team in a win? I mean, seriously. He must he must cover the uh, he must cover the Giants, right? I don't know. Plus, it's a victory just that Chen is staying off the disabled list for a minute and a half. Uh, sometimes he does this more harm than good when he's playing. Yeah, we prefer him on the yeah, sometimes it's better to be on the DL. He is a national baseball writer and columnist for the San Francisco Chronicle. He is in his 31st year covering the Giants, the A's. He's in his 36th year covering ball. He has been made sad by his lot in life when he's watching baseball, and he says, and he writes, Gotta love the Marlins. They intentionally walk Longori to fill the bases and face the game's hottest hitter, Crawford. Then Chen balks. Then Chen intentionally walks Crawford. Then Chen gets the hook. I don't believe I'm tweeting this. He sounds peanut butter and jelly to me. Take the L, John. He yes. lost yesterday. That's yeah. a writer who's bitter because his team lost. Is he John with an H, by the way, or no H? It's an H. Hmm. I was going to say don't trust him if he doesn't have an H, but he has an H. So Mike, does him. it hold up? Thanks. Does it hold up? John uh, Ham needs to add an H. Get back on the A list. <laughs> Fake Howard talking with real Howard. Does it hold up, Mike? Before I want to soften it if it doesn't. I don't want it to just land like a dead fish. Uh, you've listened to it. Does it hold up? Real Howard Schnellenberger talking to fake Howard Schnellenberger and not having a lot of time for the fake Howard Schnellenberger. I believe we did this interview while at a cabana at the Hard Rock. I think this actually holds up, and I have very exciting news. What's that? Fake Howard might be joining us here Whoa. momentarily, so let's wow. play this. Wow. Okay. We can have Cody interview him. We can have Cody yes, interview yes. him for the National, for the College Football Hall of Fame. little appetizer first, though, I think, right? Yes, little appetizer. And get uh, get fake Howard ready. Cody, you start getting ready for your interview with the real fake Howard Schnellenberger. Yeah. Start getting ready. I'm getting ready. Fake Howard, I want you to explain to me how the family is going to be at the game on Saturday, Fake Howard. Well, I'm, I'm certain that uh, Beverly and the kids and the grandkids will certainly be at the stadium. Uh, root me on, as they always are, and uh, just want to see a fine, fine football game. <laughs> I think the real Howard is mortified at this point. So what do you give it? After everything you've heard there, the real Howard, how do you feel? Well, I feel like anybody that thinks that sounds like me shouldn't come to the game on Saturday. <laughs> That's it. We're, we're pushing away fans. What we're going to try now, Hello. because... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Who wants to speak up there? The fake Howard or the Hello. real... Yes? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, did we lose the real Howard, or is the fa are they still there? Uh, no, I'm still here. I had another call I had to take. I, I, and that, that's funny, because I, too, have <laughs> through. I'm not quite sure why the phone would be ringing. Uh, clearly, people know to block out my time when I come on your program, Dan. <laughs> He's lost it. <laughs> we were in the cabana, right? I believe we were, yes. Yep. Or Rocco <laughs> It sounds like you were in space. <laughs> not, not great audio. Mike, I'm telling you, we got to keep going back to some of the old stuff just to make fun of it. It sounds like Apollo 11. <laughs> it does. It really does. It sounds, it sounds, the sound is so bad. It sounds like something we're doing in a closet in an, in a spacecraft that is running out of fuel and needs to save energy. And so the wattage on the intercom system isn't quite as strong as it needs to be. We should go back to the moon. Right? Yeah. Things have probably changed there. I thought you were going to say we should go back to the hard rock. I thought that's what you were going to say. <laughs> not, Nothing's not changed there. <laughs> that's not true, actually. The hard rock. Things have changed? I mean, the economy of the hard rock. That used to be nothing but cigarette trailers. That whole area used to be nothing. It used to be like, it looked like a desert. And then all of a sudden we allowed gambling. The government allowed gambling. And then 
Next thing you know, it's Las Vegas in the middle of this, it's like near 441. It doesn't even make any sense. It's like nothing, <laughs> nothing grows near 441. Have you seen the giant guitar shaped hotel yes. they're making there? It's crazy. Very impressive. Yeah, Stugatz is wrong about nothing has changed about the Hard Rock. The Hard Rock's got more money than any of us. The Hard Rock is recession proof. I was at the Hard Rock actually this last weekend. It seems as though they're gearing up for the Super Bowl that's coming here in a couple of years because that whole outside area, that's gone. They're building a hotel slash condo building that's in the shape of a guitar with all sorts of cabanas on the outside. I think everything that was on the outside is going to have a roof over it. It's going to be really nice, but there's a lot of construction going on right now. All right, we got three minutes left. This is the fake Ooh. Howard Schnellenberger's return. He hasn't dusted this off in 10 years. Let's have him. Let's have Cody interview the fake Howard Schnellenberger, and go ahead. Have at it, Cody. Howard, it's uh, Greg Cody. How you doing? Uh, hello? Howard, Greg Cody, how uh, you doing? Once again, Cody, uh, always a pleasure having you, uh, listening to you on the program. I think we last spoke uh, at Pope Fest. How have you been? Never better, never better. We're enjoying the retirement with the kids and the grandkids and, of course, Beverly. Be- Move- Beverly's doing okay? <laughs> Moving along, she's, Cody. She's Cody, get, it's not... It's getting... I was going to say, Dan, sorry, Beverly's getting friskier as she gets old. Oh, I like to hear that. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> Howard, the reason I, I know I'm... you would if Levitard wouldn't step over me. <laughs> exactly. The, Howard, the reason I'm calling is, you know, I'm continuing my campaign to try to get you in the College Football Hall of Fame, and I'm wondering what would that mean to you, and why don't you think they've ever inducted you yet? Well, it would mean a lot to me, obviously, and I'll tell you, it's a damn shame. You know, they, they, they penalize a coach of my stature for starting up some new programs. And I took a program like FAU, and somehow I'm supposed to turn that into a perennial winner overnight. (laughs) Exactly. Listen, um, let me see any of those jokers in the College Football Hall of Fame do what I did. At at one point, you uh, you gave up pipe smoking. Uh, You're gonna you're gonna start smoking a pipe again, right? Because I really think that's such a part of your brand that it would help you get in the hall. Biggest mistake I ever made. Never should have given up that pipe. That pipe and that jacket with the patches on the elbows, I'd be in there right now. That bust would have me with the patches and the pipe, and let me tell you, it'd get a good, uh, it'd get a good showing at that Hall of Fame. All right. It's, uh, I am very happy to have brought you out of retirement. We're going to call you more often. Uh, try not to let your lawyerly duties get in the way of our program, okay? We're talking to you again. Uh, oh, thank you for having me on your program. <laughs> I miss him. <laughs> I mean, that was a, a totally different life. That was a lifetime ago. Yes, it was. <laughs> Cody, you're a terrible interviewer. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, like we were all, everyone in the studio was, Cody, move it along. Well, what move happens? it along. And you're just, uh, hey, Howard. My uh, interviewing technique is to make small talk first and ease into the conversation. I, I'm, I, I enact a conversational tone uh, as my interview. It wasn't a style. real interview with a real person. 